everybody. Welcome to episode eight of the Authors Roundtable. It's uh, we we are, we are back again with this wonderful wonderful crew, and 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 I appreciate it. the The main goal of this website, or there we go. The main goal, take two. Now, the main goal of this podcast is just to help uh, new authors, like like a lot of us still are and once were, uh, get started and 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 not hit a lot of the pitfalls that that we did, right? And and so I'm sure that we're going to have a lot of wonderful horror stories from from things we've hit before in the past ourselves, and 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 we'll be able to help you. Uh, Ja, looks like uh, you may have been in a windstorm there for a second. Uh, so so so, so we, we we are back with our introductions. Uh, it's uh, you know it was sort of like a horror movie there for a second. Uh, you know, or, or the old Sorry. Star Trek movie. You know everybody just, you know, just lean to the left. Uh, so so let's start our introductions here. The first person I'm going to introduce is J.A. Bulet. And 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 J.A., could you tell us just a little bit about yourself and, and, and what you've got coming up soon? Um, well, I'm a historical fiction author. I specialize in military uh, war fiction and um, and historical romance and just general historical fiction, um, mostly North America. I, I did I did write a book uh, about a European conflict as well. Um, but I seem to have this fascination with wars. <laughs> um, but they're not all like that. Uh, this current one, whichever way the road leads, is uh, is a little bit of a western. So I am I, I don't think I'm changing my genre. I'm just um, how would you put it modifying it a bit, right? Because westerns are tech technically still historical fiction right um but i thought i would start getting into america history right and i love westerns i just love it <laughs> oh me, me as well i mean i used to read you know louis the moore you know for for years was sort of my go-to in fact you know i still read sackett's novels from you know his his second novels all the time mm -hmm. so so welcome and and then next we have have david schleicher with us so, David, if you could give us your introduction, what you've got coming up, and 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 we'll keep going on the intros. Appreciate you joining. Uh, sure. So, uh, David Schleicher, um, I publish under D H Schleicher. Um, I've been doing the self-publishing thing since 2018. Um, my first novel was uh, Then Came Darkness, and I was inspired to put this out into the world, even though I had written it. Uh, well before I think I completed like the first draft in like 2012 or 2013, um, I was inspired by the birth of my son to put it out in the world because I wanted to show that, you know, you can you can live out your dreams and do do whatever you uh, want to do if you put your mind to it. Um, I had had an earlier, um, I would say, uh, stint with vanity presses um, that was a complete disaster. Um, and so I had taken a long break, uh, was always writing stuff, wrote Then Came Darkness, um, and then with the birth of my son decided to uh, start doing it again. And uh, since then, I've published two uh, short story collections. Um, then Came Darkness, I should have said, is a historical thriller. Uh, the this, this short story collections are literary fiction. I also dabbled a little bit with some... I guess light sci-fi maybe um, in the second collection in one of the stories. Um, and then my second novel, uh, West Falls Revisited, is going to be coming out on June 25th. And that is a uh, literary fiction, um, has some elements of mystery. Um, I don't know if suspense would be the right word, but I hope I keep people guessing what's going to happen to all the different characters in it. Um, and uh, this novel has been interesting because I started writing it pre-pandemic. It was a contemporary novel that I was writing, quote unquote, in real time. And when the pandemic hit, it changed the entire course of the novel. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that lands with readers because um, it is abrupt, <laughs> but that's kind of how it happened in real life. So uh, we'll see. I'm a I'm very nervous about the release of this one. Um, it's probably my most personal in terms of some of the observations and some of the things that happen to the characters. So um, we shall see. Fingers crossed. I'm excited, but nervous. Uh, and yeah, that's that's it. That's awesome. 
And then also today we have have Rami Unger. So Rami, if you can let us know what you what you've got and where you are, we'll we'll keep going through for for our intros. Appreciate you joining, David. Hi everyone. My name is Rami Unger. I'm a novelist from Columbus, Ohio, specializing in horror and dark fantasy. And I'm actually celebrating two big anniversaries of this month for my books. Uh, one, this honking big novel right here, uh, Snake. Just turned 10 years old this week. Wow. Uh, it's about a serial killer hunting mobsters in New York City. I think John Wick, Taken, and Friday the 13th got smushed together into a novel. <laughs> so it's on sale through Monday. If anyone's interested, go to your favorite retailer, check it out. And on the other, and uh, next week, actually a week from today, the this novel, Rose. Uh, turns five years old and is going on sale as well. It's about a young woman who's turned into a plant-human hybrid, and that's just the start of her problems. <laughs> Very Kafka-esque, lots of Japanese mythology mixed in. It's a great fantasy horror novel, so if you want to, please uh, check it out next week when it goes on sale. And thank you. That's all I got. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, hey uh, Rami, I have to ask, um, have you heard of or read Rivers Solomon? Um, she wrote a book, and I I could probably check at some point what the title was. I, I can't remember, but it was very memorable, and it was about a woman who basically turned into a uh, fungus. It, it, it's it's very strange. I've um, never heard of that, but, but now I want to look it up. But yeah, it sounds. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if it's similar to your stuff or not. But I, I, it's one of the strangest things I've ever read. So if I, if I could up. interject on that note, uh, if you recall, uh, Stephen King turned into a plant in Creepshow, oh, a movie yes. and then I've never actually uh, seen that. There, it's a it's a graphic novel. It was also a movie, and it stars Stephen King as himself uh, turning into a plant because of a <laughs> meteorite that crashes into Earth. It's very bizarre. It's sort of a uh, a uh, multi-story uh, thing, or a la the Twilight Zone. They had like twenty minutes each in the movie, but uh, his portion he uh, stars in it. It's from the early '80s, and it's very good. It's got a son in it too, uh, who's a writer. Uh, so I've actually so... never seen the any of the Creep Show movies. Oh, really? Very good. Oh, the first one is excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De de definitely watch those. Uh, so, so appreciate you joining. And then next we we have Harriet Helfand. So so Harriet, let's let's have your intro. Oh, thank you, David. Um, I write under H. C. Helfand, my uh, initials, and um, I write literary fiction. Although I have um, published a children's book with a friend of mine, and uh, it was traditionally published and well received, and it was the hardest thing I ever wrote. So I said, okay, no more children's lit. Now <laughs> I'm going to adult fiction, which is what I write now, and I'm much happier doing it. Um, my books have legal themes. I had a long legal career. And uh, so I worked, wrote the first one, Fee Simple Conditional. Um, I had not intended it originally to be a series, but I liked my characters so much I couldn't let them go. So I wrote a second, Clear and Convincing Evidence. And uh, again, the uh, real estate, you know, uh, there's a... Uh, sort of a uh, real estate scandal in the first book. The second book, it's more of a scandal in uh, the psychiatric commitments. And um, now I'm working on a third. I hope to publish it in November. Mm. It's called The Right of Redemption. <laughs> and that has to do, again, it's sort of a real estate theme, but again, uh, it addresses the foreclosure crisis mm. with a little bit of some other stuff um, in there and it's uh it's local i live in outside of baltimore maryland so it's kind of maryland centric it has a lot of uh location names and polit a little bit of politics not a whole lot and i enjoy doing it. it's a lot of fun they've been independently published and one of the best things about being on a round table like this and meeting other authors is just learning what everybody does and how they do it it's inspiring and it's fun and i Thank David and all my, you know, fellow uh, podcasters for, uh, <laughs> for hosting. Thank you. Very, you're very welcome. It's it's one of those things where it's, you know, it it started off as as just just a way to get out and 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 meet people. And and I don't, uh, you know, 
I, I can't, you know, express how happy I have been with the writing community and just how supportive people are. So I'm like, I, I've got to give back, right? You know, I, uh, you know, don't don't get me wrong. In my next statement, I would love to to do nothing but but writing, right? I, I would I would love that, but I have you know a full time career that I'm really good at, according to some people that pay me for some reason, and and so for me, it's one of the things where I just wanted to give back. So so appreciate it. appreciate your point being here, and then next we have. John St. Clair. So John, if you can, you can do the needful here. Yep. Thanks, uh, David, for doing these. I think this is my seventh or eighth one. I, I know I was an uh, early on uh, participant. So thank you for doing these uh, on a recurring basis. Great to meet uh, and participate with my fellow authors. So again, I'm John St. Clair. I live in uh, Reston, Virginia. That's Northern Virginia. And I have one book under my belt. It's uh an interesting niche um, Russian historical fiction. So I know that a couple of folks here are in the historical fiction business. I did Russian historical fiction, which uh, seems like an interesting first attempt at being a novelist. But uh, after tons and tons of research, I, I think I have a really neat story. And, and I'm sure you'll see the, the pictures and everything. But the book is uh, is uh, been out for a little bit. And uh, I really like it. Um, took took years to write, and uh, I think that uh, it was a humbling experience. <laughs> lots and lots of lessons learned that I wish I had known before. And uh, podcasts like this sort of uh, give back to the community and 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 give out bits of information that could save potentially someone else from from the pitfalls uh, that we all experience, perhaps. But. Uh, got a couple other things I'm working on, some literary fiction, a novel which has been taking forever, and a new science fiction novel that I'm working on. So lots of things uh, in the in, in the hopper. Uh, like with anything else, uh, life gets in the way of, uh, of, of writing, and so things appear to be very slow, but uh, I'm hoping that in the long run, they pay off. So I'm very happy to be here, and thank you again, David, for, uh, for having me. Very welcome. Glad to have you here. And then, and then, uh, last but not least, is 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 a uh, is is a wonderful person. Uh, Chris Chris Brown is here today. So you thought I was going to talk about myself, did you? Chris? <laughs> I, I, I certainly did. I, I had to second guess myself. It's like he's not talking about me. I'm not wonderful. I'm come on. <laughs> Who else um, is here? <laughs> thank you so much, David, for hosting this. Um, I, I, so I'm Chris Brown. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, beautiful Calgary, Alberta. Uh, I released a book back in 2022 about uh, my sort of biography, Just Keep Talking, uh, after I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and sort of the challenges that overcame that sort of scenario. And then uh, in our last session, which I checked before recording, was back in December. So six months ago, almost to the day we last recorded. And wow. I was talking about some of the challenges that I was having about writing my second book. And it was actually Rami and John St. Clair who said, just write. Don't go back. Don't re-edit. Just write, write to your heart's content. And <laughs> with that, I wrote to my heart's content and I sent my second book, which I've been writing for some time now, to a publisher, and they have suggested me breaking it up into four different books. So in October, my first official fiction book will be coming mm. out on the bookshelves. I'm looking forward Yay! to that, and I'm nice. really excited. It's a political thriller, because uh, and, and there's going to be a conversation that we're going to have here in a few minutes, and I'm going to sort of hopefully lead it off if David's content, but we'll get into that a little bit later once I talk about what it's all about. So David, what about you? How are you? Introduce yourself, David. <laughs> well, I uh so, so I'm David Musser. I started writing when COVID started, right? That that's that that was that was me. Uh I wrote years before that, but it was one of those things that I made a mistake that that we'll talk about real quick first, just during my intro, is when you show your work to someone else, even if you respect them, you think they're the best person in the world and they have the best intentions, you know, don't just take that first review and being, oh, I'm just going to put down writing. I'm, I, I suck at it. We're done. <laughs> you know, it's there's ways to overcome it. Right. So 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 because when I first showed something to someone, they 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 picked apart the grammar. Right. Things that editors do. They picked apart all the other stuff about the story, but didn't pick apart the story. And I took it to heart. So I didn't write for 20 years. Uh 
So, but during COVID, it was one of the things of, am I going to sit here and just binge watch every TV show that I always wanted to watch? <laughs> or am I going to actually do something productive when I'm, when I'm not working? <laughs> uh, so, so that's me. I write hard. Uh, you can find me at dmuster.com. Uh, started off independent. And then, uh, then about six months ago, I guess it was right before that, I, I ended up being published by Next Chapter Publishing. And, uh, and now what I'm doing, Chris, is I am in hell uh, because I am editing. Uh, I got the edits back on my first set of books that I sent for republishing to Next Chapter. I get the edits back for two new novels that I'd sent to two different editors all within a week of each other. Huh. Oh, my God. So my brain <laughs> luck. just went insane. Um, uh, so, so yes. So, so how would so, you know the difference there, David? Well, there is, there is always that it's it, less voices. I think it's, 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 it got quiet in there and I'm going, wait a second. And, and, and right before that I was working on a story. Of course I write horror. So everybody knows I write horror and I develop these wonderful characters that have to die. That's where they're at. And cause they're in a, they messed up and they were in a horror novel and I'm like going, I kind of like them, and I'm like, I don't know if I can kill any of them. <laughs> and so it may just turn into a drama that I never publish, right? but, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, they all live happily ever after. So, so speaking of that, though, so 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 Chris, you you mentioned you had something to discuss. Let's get it's everybody get there, get there, get you know, put Chris on the couch here, and and, and we'll talk about hey, we'll talk about this what is better than therapy. I don't have to pay for it each week. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, we have to send you an invoice for oh. for five hundred seventy five dollars and sixty eight cents. Yeah, send, but it's send Canadian. It to David. Yeah, exactly. It's Canadian okay. dollars, so it's a lot less. <laughs> You know. Ten dollars monopoly money. <laughs> right. You'll also, get in the mail this week. Also, Chris, I just want to say, I've been, I'm really glad to hear that uh, our advice really helped. Um, awesome. I've thought a lot, but about that moment, uh, about that last episode mm -hmm. that I was on, um, and the advice we gave you, and I hope it would be uh, helpful. I was actually going to ask you about it, but you uh, mentioned it out loud, so I'm glad that it's working out for you. Yeah, awesome. Same. So now the question is because I think I let off the last conversation too. So I'm going to just lead off this conversation a little bit. I love it. What do you do about imposter syndrome? So everyone reads their own books, and then you have probably compared your own work to other people's works. So when I sent my first manuscript to my publisher, the first thing I got back was you're basically trying to be John Grisham, but in a different political <laughs> arena. And I went, no, I'm not <laughs> at all. Has anyone ever come up with that sort of uh, face plant where you write something, you think it's spectacular. And then the first thing someone tells you out of their mouth is, well, this is similar to this person's work or this person's book. I is it just me or am I just thinking way too much into that sort of uh mindset of being an imposter and i shouldn't actually be writing um that's not imposter syndrome that that's called being influenced by a writer okay. well i i yeah i i don't know if it's influenced or i i was i with with my with my latest book i've never written a western before <laughs> mm -hmm. and i was compared to i can't remember his name the the yellowstone uh Screenwrite player. Oh, uh, Taylor Sheridan. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right away, and and three times in a row. That's a great and compliment. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, then I, then I googled it more, and I was like, "Wow, that's a huge compliment." Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, you know, it is the same genre, right? It's 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 western, uh, and it's and it's family American family saga. Right. So so maybe they're just comparing it based on the genre, like the legal and mm -hmm. and that it's very close to that author. Right. Yeah, I, I have to I have to. Oh, sorry, Harriet. I was just going to say, it's just, it, it, you can have the same type of novels. Think of all the romance novels, the Regency mm -hmm. novels, you know, something yeah. comes popular. It doesn't mean it's the same book. It's just the same era. 
So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say it, too. Uh, uh, imposter syndrome is more. I'll, I'll give you what I think it is. It's more that you don't live up, or you're not good enough, or you're not uh, uh, worthy of uh, it being good in, in in the sense of uh, of your peers. Uh, hey, I'm not great enough. I, I, I'm not at their level. I, there's so much to learn. I, I know nothing. I'm stupid. You know, those are all things that I think about when it comes to imposter syndrome. What you're describing, Chris, I think is, um, well, there's the 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 trope that there's only six stories that have ever been published. You know, man versus nature, man versus man, man versus you know, you know, whatever. They're all derivatives of of everything, and so there is not nothing original. I, I wouldn't take that uh, really as a negative. Uh, you can maybe turn that into a positive because when it comes to marketing, you're going to have to anyway. You're going to have to say, hey, my, my book is, and, and somebody already said this uh, on the call, it, it's John Wick, you know, meets, uh, you know, <laughs> something else. You're going to need those uh, those comps uh, to, to be able to market yourself. So it's really yeah. not, it's not a negative. It, it might be a positive. Publishers but, actually love comps as do agents. Like if you, if you can work it into your elevator pitch, then and it can help uh, sell the book. Like, I cannot tell you how many people have been like, ooh, it's how I love those particular movies. I think I will read that book now. A hundred percent. Yes. Right. And on when you do when they, you know, if you do a traditional query letter for an agent, that's one of the things they you need to put in or comps. Mm -hmm. And that's I. I Sometimes it's hard to find because you think you've written something really original and it's like, okay, so what is, who, what is my book like? <laughs> Chris is like, okay, okay. Harriet, is this a trick question? Take, because I taken think, the uh, words out of my mouth because literally I didn't do a query letter. I just knew someone who knew a publisher and they, they mm -hmm. had read it. They said, you should send it. I sent it to them. Mm -hmm. They said, we'd love to publish it, but you're not going to publish one big book. You're going to do four smaller books. And then they went, we like it. It's basically a version of John, uh, not John Grisham, Tom Clancy. I apologize, not John mm -hmm. Grisham, Tom Clancy, yeah. but in a smaller, more rural setting. And then I said, I'm not trying to be Tom Clancy. Yes, that's <laughs> great. Yes, okay. Yeah. Like I have all of his books on my, well, all of his books and now his predecessor's books on my shelves, mm -hmm. but I'm not trying to be that. And now it's making me go read back all through what I've written. I go, did I literally just take Tom Clancy's voice and transpose it into my book with my words. And that's where the imposter syndrome is going on. Uh, and saying, okay. well, is it? So yeah, that's why I'm answering you, five questions there at once. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, yes. I see that. I, I sort of did uh, the same with Ken Follett because I'm a big Ken Follett fan. I, I have like, like you said, I have almost every book, but I did stop reading him because he actually um, offended me as a reader. No. And included um, a really bad rape scene with uh, children. Mm. And I literally closed the book, didn't open it again, never read another one of his. Mm. Um, but like you said, I think some things stick with you as a writer, right? Mm. And and I do a lot of the scene changes like he does, right? Like, so every chapter, right, I'll focus on the main character. And then the second chapter will be all about the secondary character. And then it would flip back and forth. He does the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I think it's more of just how you you have evolved as an author, right? Because we pick up little bits and pieces in our lives and in our careers and that's what we that's what we mold ourselves into you know i just say just remind me i had a very weird thing happen to me recently my my first book as i said is about a land deal and it has to do with a claw an old clause and a deed and i actually started it over 20 years ago and like david i picked it up during covid because you know i wanted it published in my lifetime but um, a lot of it did come from my career, just little bits and pieces, not so much the story itself, but just sort of the environment. So last week I was reading an online local newspaper and I see a story that is very similar to my book. Oh. I mean, a real life story. Now it wasn't identical, but it was about 
uh, a piece of land near where my piece of land was. <laughs> and it had to do with a, a clause and a deed. And oh, wow. um, so I thought this is this, you know, life imitating art. I said, this wow. is so bizarre. So I actually contacted the journalist who wrote the piece. And I said, this is really strange. And I have this book. And she wrote back to me. And I almost felt like a little insulted. She said, well, it must have been something you read. <laughs> well, and I wrote back to her. I said, no, I wrote this 20 years ago. I right. said, plus the deed that I referred to was a deed that I found 40 years ago yeah. that was written in 1926. I said, I made this up. That's so hilarious. don't accuse me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So she said, so I sent her my books. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think Chris, I, I would just own it. I mean, because because if you think about it, like like Stephen King, he 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 you know gives a lot of props to to Lovecraft, right? Mm. And, and ones like that. So so for me, you know, it, it's you know, there's there, there's Stephen King. There, there's there's Lovecraft, there's Clive Barker, those type those types of people when it comes to it. But then on the side of, of other things that I try to emulate, like you know, you know, Robert Parker, right? You know, the way he does the dialogue and the way he does the narration and things like that are just just amazing. And and I was listening to a podcast the other day, and there was the gentleman who writes Goosebumps. Mm -hmm. And he Arl Stein. Stein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he was talking about Parker and how good the dialogue and everything was. And I'm like, that's just amazing. So, so yeah, so, so just own it. I mean, it, it's one of, you know, for me, as long as you're not taking five pages to describe how the bullet's turning through the air and then it goes around <laughs> again and again. And again, oh, it's going around again. Yeah. I'm okay. But I was reading. I was reading some of some, some of his books and 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 just I don't remember if it was Hunt for Red October or which one it was, but just I was like going, okay, I can, I'm gonna skip a couple pages because I don't care about what's going on right now. And I'm like, gotta skip a couple more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes into vivid descriptions oh. of of submarines and oh. and everything, equipment and and weapons to the point that you're like, is this uh is this a manual for <laughs> how to get away with murder? Yeah, exactly. That's a TV no. show. But yeah, no, I, I think just own it. I mean, that's you know, and and you know, you're not you're not copying anything, but but you, you're having that feel, right? And, yeah. and 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 that that for me is is one of the things where a lot of the stuff that I write, you know, I'm thinking about those other authors who aren't horror authors and going, hey, how if, if they were to write a horror novel, what would it feel like? And so so those are some of the things I try to do uh, to use the people that I read. Huh. Also, well, thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for that uh, yeah. that enlightening thirty minutes discussion. There, I apologize for taking no. the first question. No, 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 well, no, no, no. It, It's perfect because if you think about it, you know, this whole point of this podcast is to help new writers. So if somebody else gets that comment, like, "Oh, well, you're just trying to rip off Stephen King," it's like, "No, I, I'm writing a story. I'm writing a horror story. Yeah, yes, there's a vampire in it. Uh, yes, they're not the shiny, you know, vampires or whatever." Uh, they they are a real traditional vampire. That's not just Stephen King that does, did that, right? You know, there's the strain and others and things like that. So, mm -hmm. so for me, it's one of the things that again, just just own it. See, so, yeah, hopefully you'll like it better than 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 you liked it. So, definitely a faster read. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I I wonder uh, what everyone thinks, or if anyone has thoughts on like, what if you have like the opposite problem? And and uh, somewhere in the conversation, this was mentioned, like if you don't if you struggle to find comps for your work and by no means is this because i think i've written something so unique that it's never been written before it's just that i haven't happened across you know particular things mm. that are are similar and I, I i find myself struggling um with the the current novel that's about to be released i'm like i beyond the normal you know really you know blasts and and type of marketing that goes with any kind of release of a book i don't know how to continue to market it i don't know what i i, don't, I struggle to find comps and um i kind of fell into a, a thing where while i was writing it i read a book um called homegoing by uh ya yasi which was unlike any book i've ever read in terms of the style and how it was presented mm. 
and I was like, oh man, I was like, my stylistically mine's a little bit like this, but it's so completely different plot wise, character wise, all that stuff. So I would never, ever want to comp it to something that's that, <laughs> um, it's, it, you know, it's a very acclaimed literary fiction book. I think it was like, you know, on Oprah's list or whatever, like hugely popular, very, uh, great novel so like i'm like stuck in that space where like i don't want to compare it to something that it's really not similar to plot wise character wise that an average reader probably wouldn't think but stylistically it's mm -hmm. in terms of how the story is presented it's similar um, phrase it like that i, I was mean, gonna say that that's a that's a long-winded that, <laughs> you, long say, you say it is nothing like this book at all you'll <laughs> i mean it's seriously you know i mean say it exactly like you just did in the style of x but a unique story or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Pride and Prejudice with Zombies, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, well, wow. I wish I could come up with something like that. That's like Abraham so Lincoln easy to market. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, do you use arc readers? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm very strategic and selective with my arc readers. So I, and I probably, in this case, I think I might have done myself a disservice not getting more. Um, well, you I could could've... ask them, right? Yeah. Like you can ask Ooh. them. That That's what happens to me is they will actually tell me, right? I've even been compared to Danielle Steele. Um, so I think they, they're they the ones that might be able to tell you because sometimes as authors, we're too, we're too connected to our books, yeah. right? Mm. The, there, there's so much part of us that to us it's just it's just me right this is me right but when a reader picks up the book they see all of those uh, all of those similarities like 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 well like Tom Clancy and you know and John Grissom right so maybe ask them yeah I think that's a good idea because I think you're right we become very close to it it almost becomes part of our identity uh -huh. yeah it's hard to see past that Especially when they want you to cut a certain character or cut oh. a certain it, 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 it group, you're like, "What are you doing to me?" Sorry, I apologize. With, yeah. Just, just on what David said there. So I, I was listening to because if we're name dropping other podcasts, that's not mine, David. I'll say that I listen to other podcasts besides yours. I didn't um, name the podcast though. So I was listening to Richard Osman from the United Kingdom. He writes the Thursday Murder uh, Murder Clubs. It's just a new series that just came out. And in his in a show that he was doing, he talked about how he, when he's writing, he doesn't read other books. He doesn't actually sit down and read any other books while he's writing. So if he's writing for a full week, he will not read anything else. So it's not to influence him or for him to sort of guess or sort of draw that correlation between him and that other author and saying, oh, I'm writing in the style of X. Now, yeah. I can tell you my reading ability over the last six months has dramatically dropped off. I probably have picked up one book and that's mine. And I'm pretty sure I hate my book now because I've read it so many times. <laughs> you can read it over and over again. You go, okay, you know what's going to happen. But do you find that you're only sort of connecting the two dots because you just read that book? If you had picked up another book, hypothetically, would you have been connecting it to that book as well? That That's a good point. Um, I take so long to 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 write my stuff. I I would probably, I, I don't know that I could shut down reading. But that's a good point to like think about it critically like that. Like, hey, am I just comparing it to this because mm. I'm I'm in the midst of working on my book and reading this amazing novel, which, I mean, it just blew me away. Um, and and then you start some of that imposter says syndrome slips in because i'm like why why would i even dream to compare myself to this novel this novel is like so far above and beyond anything i could ever write um but at if the same there's ever yeah. a title to a uh, to an episode of this round table it's imposter syndrome by the hey, there you go. I, like it. I think that's a perfect title because i'm gonna write it down right now <laughs> I don't know. That's just I, I, when he when he said that, I, I yep. kind of took it to heart, and I just stopped reading because literally Tom Clancy has written about five, or his off his pre authors have, or post authors have written about five new books, and I've been dying to buy them, but I just refuse to because I'm waiting till I can publish the first book, and then I can catch up on all my reading in like September. I I almost wonder. Um, maybe I could 
deliberately pick uh bad books to read while I'm writing because that because then it could be like oh stuff to avoid like I don't want my book to end up like this. Right. and also your book will seem so much better right. oh my gosh yeah right. or or you can actually pick up books that's outside of your genre right yeah. something that yeah. you would yeah. never never write yeah that's 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 good advice yeah and I, I've done that before with previous work and it yeah it's funny because I I would I started I went on like a mini sci-fi kick and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna write a sci-fi short story now. But I I wasn't doing it <laughs> while I was reading the the, the sci-fi. Everybody yeah, tells I... me they're like they're like, as much as you like sci-fi, why don't you write a sci-fi book? I'm like, because I like sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to just enjoy that. I don't want to have to be like, oh, it's a lightsaber, it's not a lightsaber, it's not a phaser, <laughs> it's a you know, I'm like, no, nah, I'm just gonna enjoy sci-fi and stick with it. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. the one thing you did mention david you mentioned marketing like you know for when this is coming out and mm -hmm. that for me is is just extremely hard there, there's there's you know there's no easy ways around it you know for, for me when I was independent author it was fun uh in, in the fun sense and then you know even even with the publisher they're doing as much as they can and I'm, I'm doing as much as i can but a lot of it's just you know posting on social media and things like that is it is like being pulled into 25 different directions. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're I'm, that's what I'm going through right now. It's yeah. just, and it, it, it's to the point where I wake up now and I'm just like, did I do that or did I not? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to post how many times a day? And, and it's like, when I, I'm tempted just to like see go to a college and say, can I get an intern just to publish this? Yeah, just... <laughs> Just to do the Twitter and social media stuff, and do I gotta pay them? You know? But has anybody figured out the secret to to this? I, I think. I, oh, sorry. I, I was just gonna say that's a great suggestion, David, about going to a college and getting an intern. I'm, I don't know <laughs> if that's allowed though, like especially unpaid. Right? Eh, maybe a community well, college. Hey, there you go. <laughs> unpaid internships are illegal. Yeah, there you go. At least in the United States. In mm. Canada, I have no idea what the law Are they really? Is. Wow. They don't have awesome. laws in Canada. Yeah, they're they illegal here in the United, the United States. States. <laughs> you have to pay your interns and pay them a fair wage. Yeah. Fair wage. <laughs> fair <laughs> wage. So, okay. So again, because I've been doing a lot of listening while I've been typing, again, going back to another, uh, because I've been trying to get ideas of how I'm going to be able to market this because it's an independent publisher. So even the main publishers are having a hard time marketing books today. It's not huh. something that the independent authors are having a hard, like just independent authors. What I was told by my, my editor was don't do the traditional route. So there is uh, like an underbelly of book lovers on TikTok, on social media who are basically like, cash cows for any author right now when they read a book and they like it and they show it on their social media they go viral and those book sales will go up according to my publisher oh. so when you see someone on social media who's getting a lot of views who is in your genre my publisher said reach out to them ask wow. them to read your book so that way they could potentially have that because they're always looking for books to read they're always looking for potential new things to promote because <laughs> They're, they like free stuff as well. Yes, you're going to have to pay $17 or $20 to go send your book to someone you don't know who potentially may or may not write it. Mm. But it is a way that you get Brilliant. into a different class of marketing because when you post on your own social media, you're only sharing it to your sort of echo mm -hmm. chamber, right? Uh -huh. yeah. The people yeah. that follow you. But if you talk to people who are not, in your echo chamber who do have a following on social media, whether it be TikTok or Instagram or whatever, they might read it, like it, share it. And if they don't, it's $17. Is it at the end of, or it's a publisher with book, I should say. And how would you find them? I mean, are there that's the identify <laughs> that's you know, the million sources? dollar question. So on on Instagram, it's all the algorithm, right? So it's all the algorithm that you have to sort of like go down the rabbit hole. I can tell you my social media feed is full of them because I follow a lot of people who like books because I want to see what I could potentially read next. So I follow people to see what I could read. And oh, they're I not getting paid down. by the publishers. Follow Chris. I got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one... 
Well, one thing that I, I've used that really works well for me is um, a book blog tours. Um, oh, okay. And there's um, there's a lot, a lot of different ones, a lot of different genres as well. Like you can just Google it and find, um, and then these companies are just do these blog tours for you. They will put it together for you. Of course it costs money, right? So it costs anywhere from, I would say $75 to 400 for a tour. Uh, but you get lots of exposure, lots, mm -hmm. and it's money well spent much better than spending it on any other kind of advertising because you go to once you set it up, they will put it out to all their blog tour hosts and the blog tour hosts that take that 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 take the spot, right? So you might have uh, four to eight, or sometimes more stops, sometimes sixteen stops, and it'll be maybe once a week or three times a week or however they they put it together, mm -hmm. right? And they will highlight you on each of their blogs, and so you're getting their followers. Mm -hmm. And I, I got a lot from that. And but you really have to put a lot of effort into it. It's a it's a job. <laughs> because on each um on each stop that my tour is starting June twenty-fourth. Um and it's once a week because I cannot do this three three days a week. Like <laughs> no. <laughs> but um on each stop once a week, I have an interview or a guest blog post or a review, oh. right? So I have to complete those interviews. I have to complete those guest blog posts for 16 stops. Oh. So it's a lot of work, but it does pay off. Oh it, it definitely does. So I've gotten lots of people following me. So now when I come up, with a new book and I do a tour, I sold it out oh, wow. in five days. Wow. That's, that's awesome. great. Nice. Yeah. Like I sold I out I like as in <laughs> as in the as in the book tour, right? It mm -hmm. filled up in five yeah. days. That's awesome. Right. So it's it's a really good way to get and and you don't have to leave your house, right? It's all online. Mm. Now, is there a legitimate one that you like that you want to give the name of or or, or not? Um, well, the one I use is Goddess Promotions, okay. um, but that is, it's mostly for romance and, uh, well, historical romance fits in there and oh, fantasy, right? And, but I also have done historical fiction. I think it's just called historical fiction vlog awesome well that'll help they were a lot more expensive. Here other than me so yeah that's <laughs> good yeah. yeah so so like i said there's there's probably one for each oh. genre you just have to look for it exactly that that's the only bad thing is there's so many of those things where yeah. it's you know you get the hey can i promote your books like sure what, what's going to be the returns on it oh we don't guarantee returns but can you send us twelve hundred dollars uh and then <laughs> the other was i was going to be on uh, some news channel. I don't remember which one now, but they were going to interview well, interview me for the news channel. I'm like, great. How much does it, how much does it cost? And the person's like, oh, well, we 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 pay the cost. I'm like, all of it. Oh, well, you have to pay a percentage. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. Uh, so a percentage. Yeah. Well, when when dollars. you Google it, yeah. Google uh blog to, book blog yep. tours. I like okay. that. And if you I'll, Google I'll, exactly that with your genre, the the right ones will come up. Awesome. And a lot of the um, tour companies that do this are authors like us. Awesome. Well, and, and yeah. sometimes the authors try to help, right? I mean, that's what that's why we're all here. Yeah. You know, it's it's you know, we we feel good about whatever we've done, and we want to help other people get to where we are. And plus, also, they get they get the added exposure, right? They right. get more followers because now they're getting some of my followers, right? So it it is a really good tool. Okay. Nice. Awesome. So I view some stuff I've found helpful. Yes, I've used uh book book blog tours and that has been helpful. It hasn't made me 
the uh, bestseller yet, but it's been helpful. Um, I've also reached out to bookstagrammers and booktubers in the horror genre, and sometimes they are willing to work with me, and nice. they publish really nice um, um, reviews of my books. Um, the book uh, tubers, though, I will say, especially the popular ones, they get so much uh, reading material that uh, very few of them will have time for you, especially if they don't know you at all. Ooh. Yeah, it 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 takes a while too. Like when you book a tour, you have to book it in advance. I think sometimes two months in advance, so eight hmm. weeks. Some of the more popular ones will make you it uh um book a tour in six months in advance or wow. more. Oh jeez. I've got it. I've gotten that before. Uh, what? But um, one thing I would recommend not doing is Facebook ads because, really, unless you're spending five hundred dollars a day on Facebook oh ads, my God. you're not going to see returns. Uh, Facebook ads really the way Facebook's set up. I mean, even if you have an author page on there, like I do. Your posts are not getting to every uh, reader or every follower. It's just getting to a small fraction of them, especially the more uh, the the ones that follow you more consistently. The, uh, so if you want to get it to all your followers or to people beyond your followers, you have to pay a lot of money each day. And maybe then you'll get some clicks. And maybe from those clicks, you'll get some... Um, uh, purchases, but not many. Really, if you you would need Coca Cola a month or getting money in order to make Facebook ads work. Really, what you want to do is, um, if you're going to use social media, what you want to do is put out interesting graphics, um, like something in the set is, hey, this book, someone, uh. This famous person compared it to that author, or, or this famous person and compared it to this book, like, or just something very catchy. Like, think about ads that you have seen and that have drawn you in, what aesthetics they use, what language, and then try and create that for yourself. There are plenty of sites out there with free um, graphics and and templates you can use, Canva being one of them, which I use, and it's been helpful for me. I've actually had people who've seen uh, these graphics I've created and be like, hmm, that actually sounds interesting. I think I'll go check that out. Another thing you want to do, um, there are Facebook groups that are just devoted to different genres, and Mm. They can be great places. You want to avoid the ones that are, are too much about promotion and then go for the ones that regulate promotion, like only on certain days of the week or, or only after a certain number of posts. The book for the horror genre, there's the Books of Horror or, uh, Facebook group, and it has like three or four associated groups, including one for finding beta readers and advanced readers. And just from following the rules of that group, posting what I'm reading, as well as, and then every couple of posts being able to uh, post about my own work, I've gotten some um, uh, great reviews out of it. I've gotten some readers who are like, oh my God, I can't wait for your next book. So, oh, and like your, for you, Chris, you said yours is like a political thriller. Look around Facebook, see if there's any uh, groups devoted to political thrillers. Oh, but the thing is, and I'm going to sort of interject there because I, I was hoping you threw this out there. Don't just go for those type of readers. Yes, mm. it's true too. Because yeah, those true. readers will be more critical of your work than <laughs> the people who you want to potentially pick up your book. <laughs> and actually, I was going to bring up Reddit because of that. So, so you know, I keep hearing all this stuff about Reddit and all this. I, I've been around forever, so I mean, AOL, right? Ding, CompuServe. Uh, but anyway, the uh, can we take but, a moment and just remember ICQ for a second? Because yeah, on June twenty sixth, it's, 26, dead. it's yeah. dead. It's dead. It's dead. Yeah. It's, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but anyway, so, so the other day I was like, I'll, I'll start looking at Reddit because you know, I'll post and the videos and stuff I, I create, I use Camtasia and I create this with the free sources and, and I do the voices for most of mine, just using something called audacity to change my voice, to make it sound like horror and all that good fun stuff. It's, it's, it, it gives me something to do. That's not writing because I don't want to kill my characters. Uh, so, but with that, I started researching Reddit and the, so if we think Facebook groups are bad on how much they'll blast you, mm. they are nothing compared to some of the people's reviews on Reddit. Of things. Reddit it, is nasty. Um, they can be really nasty. <laughs> it's some somebody posted. They said said I wrote this. I'd love to get anybody's opinion. And and I mean the opinion was like thirty pages long. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like going. I don't know that I can handle that amount of criticism, <laughs> you know, but it's like, but yeah. there's good side if they don't criticize, but yeah. So, so just only thing I'd say about the groups, if you are looking for new groups is check out to see how the people are on the groups. And yeah, exactly. People you want to associate with then move to the next group. Yeah. yeah. I, I did want to mention about just good old fashioned book signings. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. work. They really do. And but it takes a little bit longer for it to come to a review on Amazon because you've uh, sold the book in a bookstore mm -hmm. or a review on that. Um, and those are important. Right. But I found that doing in-person book signings, people get to talk to you, but you have to be charismatic. Mm -hmm. When I did my first one, I just sat there and I watch people walk by <laughs> and then finally I clicked in about 30 minutes later and I just started talking to people awesome. right and then I, I ended up selling 10 books not too bad right awesome. um, but out, out of that a couple of the books got borrowed and they contacted me on Instagram I ended nice. up getting reviews That's from awesome. it that's awesome. Yeah. And, and I got a sign. I have two signings. I, I actually got into chapters, nice. Indigo books. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, so it does really work, but you can't sit there <laughs> and be quiet. You can't be an introvert. And I can't stress that enough because when you walk into a bookstore and there's this table of books and an author behind it, do you stop? Maybe. Uh, it, you know, it's, yeah. it, I'm glad you asked that question. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I am an introvert. And the only reason I did is because I applauded their audacity to even have the courage to approach the manager at Barnes and Noble, the local one that I go to and ask if they would host uh, a, a signing and then to go and purchase the, the, the banner graphics and the table graphics that you lay out and actually show up and bring your own books and this woman was very nice. And I talked to her probably for half an hour, picking her brain about how she was doing and how she did this and how you, uh, how I could replicate her success. And I actually bought her book and had her sign it. And so uh, I got a lot of good information from just seeing someone in the store doing exactly yeah. what you just uh, mentioned. And it was very inspiring to me. Now, I will admit I have not done it yet, but I have been inspired to to do it but you uh, have a, to it's a little talk. less inspiring yeah, yeah no i i get you, that you can't totally get, get frozen that. right you have right. to talk to the readers sure. and she did and if, if you could just th this is what i do i just put on my charismatic hat right mm -hmm. i'm i'm part introvert part extrovert but <laughs> mostly introvert but i know now that i can change i can go out i can stand in front of an audience and i can do a reading. If I can do that, I can sit at a chapters or any kind of bookstore and just talk to random people walking by. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. And, and then the more people you get, the more, well, more books you're going to sell more, more books that are borrowed. I loved that when I found out that the book got borrowed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, along the lines of um, book signings, I've never done a book signing, but I actually, because I'm too introverted to your point. <laughs> um, but I I finally got up the nerve to sign up to get a um, spot in a local book festival that I've attended. For Perfect. Probably nice. the past four or five years. So I'm just wondering if anybody has done that. I, I imagine it's similar to the dynamic 
of a book yeah, signing. Yeah, so but many I did that times. as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. is this like I... renting a table and getting a, a banner and just hang out with your authors that that are next to you, like a convention or something? Yeah, I've a... done conventions okay. too. Yeah, the the one I'm yeah. doing it's um it's the Collinswood Book Festival, and if anybody, Collinswood, New Jersey, is where the book Silver Linings Playbook took oh place. yeah yeah the movie took mm-hmm. place in philly but the, mm-hmm. the the original novel took place across the river um and so that author like he he's he's been there like they have like big name authors there but then also just a ton of indie author nice. indie authors and it's that's like a street, perfect it's like a street yeah. festival so it's really cool because it's like oh, outdoors. that's very cool and there's just yeah. a ton of a ton of people there yeah yeah um, i'm gonna be part of the ridgeway festival as well but that that is a great way to break into book signings too because you get more relaxed because you're talking to other authors right perfect. and and it's it's a great way to break into it for sure <laughs> yeah just a quick shameless plug here i apologize to interrupt for those who want to go pick up david's book you can go visit him at the collingwood's books festival on <laughs> saturday october 5th from 10 a.m to 4 p.m in collingwood's new jersey nice Head over, check it out <laughs> Hey, hey, Chris, that was hey, awesome. Thank I, you. I, I need you to uh, to record a couple things for me for commercials for my yeah. book. I will I will send you the, uh, the 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 stuff here soon. So, but yeah, the uh, I I'm I'm looking at someday going to like the Comic Cons. They have like many ones here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and stuff like that. It's not that bad for you know a table not right in the center of things. And and I'm like you know in a couple of years I'm going to go and and talk to a lot of people so so that's what I'm working up for but those you have to pay but the, some yeah. of these festivals that they have the interest fee is not that much as far as it goes and in fact yeah. there was a local library here that had a book signing thing you know and and a lot more authors showed up than I was expecting so it was kind of interesting so. yeah I I was actually shocked when I finally got up the nerve to look into it and see how much it costs like it was it's cheap. Yeah. Like compared to like other yeah. types of marketing yeah. things. And I'm like, oh, like even if I don't sell that many books just to be yeah. around other authors and maybe get some tips and, and learn some things. And sometimes yeah. it's free too with, yeah. with bookstores. Mm. You can get in for a signing oh, yeah. free. Yeah, the Barnes and Noble they... thing is free, by the way. Yeah, you just oh, have that's to, good to know. talk to the manager. And if they have a free hour and it's a weekend or a weekday or whatever, they said, yeah, you, no problem. Print up some business cards or bookmarks. Right. This Book year, I actually, yeah. <clears throat> this year I actually went to the Tucson Festival of Books. Oh yeah, yeah. Big, nice. You know, it was like yeah. 150,000 people, and even though I didn't get a presenting spot or anything, I took books and I gave them away. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> so, who oh, knows? Awesome. so I do a lot of events myself. I just did Parasitecon in Mansfield, Ohio, last month, at, and next month. Uh, the Columbus Book Festival is happening, as well as Motor City Nightmares and in Detroit. I'm going to be doing booths. I'm going to be doing a booth at uh, both of them, though. With the Columbus Book Festival, it's going to be with other members of HWA Ohio, the Ohio Horrors Association. And yeah, you do have have to be willing to talk. You have to be willing to go get them, them and be like, hey, are you interested in the horror and the macabre? But there are other ways to do it. Like if you see someone carrying a lot of books, offer them a bag. Yeah. They... <laughs> I thought you were going to say trip them. Or have a shot of Jack Daniels beforehand. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, uh, if you see someone who's carrying a lot of stuff, offer them a bag nice. for a price. Because it'll then, because one way or another, you want to get the and say, oh, well, it all also helps to have some free merch, like maybe candy or stickers. Stickers was very popular for me at Parasycon, let me tell you. <laughs> ooh, ooh, uh, and also helps be funny because people love funny. If people say, oh, that's not really my genre, uh, I probably wouldn't read it. Respond with, oh, I don't care if you don't read it. And I just want you to buy it. You can use it to prop up the couch if you want to, just as long as you get it. Either way, you make a sale, which is important. That's and, excellent. 
So you heard that yeah, right, you... kids. If you want candy and you want to go visit Rami and get candy <laughs> in Columbus, Ohio, go get his book on <laughs> July 13th, 2024, July 14th, 2024. Hey. Hey. In downtown Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Nice. <laughs> the HWA Ohio booth. Awesome. Yeah. Right. So, so we've covered marketing. We, we, we've covered imposter syndrome. Uh, what about, you know, it seems to me that there's more of us. Okay, Chris has a topic. Okay, I got one, but we'll see see which one we okay. like better. Chris, you you, you go first. I'll round yeah. off the I'll round off so, with segment four here, David. So, so so Chris did like I did and sort of fell into a publisher, right? You know, because that's, you know, it wasn't like you didn't have to go the career letter route and all that good fun stuff. It was, a you know, somebody you knew knew somebody. That's the same way it happened for me, right? Uh, my my editor that I that I had for one of my books said yeah this is good enough we should send it to the next chapter and i'm like okay <laughs> sure we should and and and, and as it is you know the, it, it's published through them uh so but as far as getting a publisher traditionally anybody who wants to do that is there any advice for this if if, if you remember how hard it was to get there or 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 is it just you know just keep writing and then the rest will happen someday what, what are your thoughts because john you're still independent right I am, and I regrettably cannot answer any of what you just asked. So uh, I have not approached and or been approached by any traditional publishers. So I'm I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And that doesn't mean that my way is better than yours. It doesn't mean that yours is better than mine. It just means that's what I'm comfortable with at the moment. Well, no, it's perfect. And, and the thing of it is with a publisher, you have to give up something, right? You're giving up something. For me, it's one of, you know, if I can go this route, and, and hopefully break through, get a name, I have good swag and all that kind of stuff that I didn't have to create myself, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the part of it I like, mm -hmm. uh, is that, that they're taking care of a lot of the other stuff, yeah. but the fact that, you know, I do give up something. Uh, now, one of the things I did have reverted back to me recently was the audiobook rights, because mm -hmm. they were, they they had it set up where they were going to do all the audiobooks as well, oh. but then something happened in their supply chain or, or something, so they were going to stop doing that. So I said, hey, just revert those back to me. I'll take care of that. You still keep publishing the, the paperback. But yeah, so so Chris, you had something to add to that? Don't get discouraged at all. Yes. Huh. So Great. we've probably all been rejected in our lives with our books. We've probably had bad reviews. We've had probably people say, what is this book? Why am I reading it? Don't get don't get upset when the first publisher you send your manuscript or you send your letter to rejects you and says it's not in our interest to uh, partner with you, because I can tell you while I did fall in, I did prior to setting out on this journey was going to go the independent publishing route. I was just going to publish sure. myself. I had sent my letter off to a few people saying, OK, would this be potentially something you want to partner with? And. <laughs> I have a stack of rejection letters from a lot of people. So don't get, uh, don't get defeated because you get rejected or people don't like it. You're never going to please hundred percent of the people in this world. I think everyone can agree to that. And mm -hmm. your book may not be the best book for your neighbor, but it might be the best book for someone four States away or four provinces away. So there's an audience for you. You just have to publish the way that you want to publish. There's my little two Good advice. <laughs> Anybody else on the on that? The the only other thing I'll add to it is that you know the like John right now when you're publishing independently, mm -hmm. you're you're publishing to Amazon, correct? And yes, else, mm -hmm. or no, you... no, just Amazon. And 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 there's a ton of different ways I could market it, but mm -hmm. then that's a ton of work that you have to put into each one of those places. Yeah, I can put it in Barnes and Noble. That's another chunk of time every day to monitor that or you know all these other places i figure if it's only in one place yeah that's all your eggs in one basket but then i can focus everything on that and mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about anything else there, there's pluses and minuses to every way of, oh, of, of well, doing well that's it. why i started yeah absolutely so yeah, i'm not saying it works uh for everyone it just works for me the way i'm doing it i mean one thing one thing i did i'll just say that um you know for me it's you know, you make a choice or, or, or maybe it's a mixed choice. Are you doing it to, you know, to make a fortune? Are you doing it to <laughs> make a profit? Or are you doing it just to get your work out there? I always say for me, it's not so much the money, it's the love I'm looking for. 
And, and I also don't want to spend a whole lot of money doing this either. So I want to try to minimize the expense and maximize the exposure. So um, I know a lot of people have done BookBub ads. I've never pursued that. I understand that there's like an auction type of thing. But I have done um, Bargain Booksy and Free Booksy. Yeah. Um, and because I just wanted to give it away. I didn't care. And I wanted to, it was yeah. an experiment. So it was basically $60 to run it for a day. And mm -hmm. I actually made it free for a few days just to have it out there, but my ad ran a day. And I gave away over 4,000 books. Wow. wow. Now, I haven't gotten 4,000 reviews, like nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the risk you take is that you might get lousy reviews that way. But I figured it was, I'd try it. You know, it was experimental and it gave me that exposure. So we'll see if I, if it ever bears fruit, I've, but I've, that was what I tried. I've done the same thing. Um, it's interesting. Like I have to go back and re-examine because I tried bargain booksy first to like <laughs> to price it. And it didn't seem like that, like I got that much traction from it, but then I did notice like a couple months later there was a big increase in KU read. So I think oh, people yeah. flagged the book and then read it on KU. Oh, uh, Kindle wow. Unlimited. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I have to go back and maybe try that again. But yeah. I've done the free one and it, it yeah, it's almost like a thrill when you see how many downloads you get. And yeah. then I do, I do I do see ratings trickle in. Like I usually don't get like full like you know, somebody typing up a review, but you'll get more ratings yes. on Goodreads oh, and yeah, you'll see yeah. you'll see people add it to your Goodreads shelves. And it's just it's just a way to get exposure to people you wouldn't have gotten exposure to otherwise. Mm -hmm. And like the if you track like the you know, the funnel of like downloads to mm -hmm. it being added to a shelf to it being rated to it actually being reviewed it's probably not that great but it's it's like good enough for the the money you're spending and it's yeah. exactly I, and i i used it um i'll see how this works too i i just ran a free weekend free reading weekend and did the the free booksy thing um for then came darkness and i got more downloads than i've ever gotten before and i'm already starting to see some ratings and reviews from it nice. and, but i did it i did the context of the ad to say hey the new novel from dh mm -hmm. ledger is coming out on june 25th but in the meantime we you know here you can oh that's his, good his that's good that is awesome. so so we'll see i'll let you guys know how that works Thank but you. i thought it would be an interesting experiment because like you said the free booksy stuff it's not that expensive so well, the other thing too is feel free to tag me or tag anybody. You know, I'll I'll put everybody on this. When you're doing something and announcing something, you know, tag mm -hmm. us in social media and 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 let us you know repost it and all that good fun stuff as well. So it, it it's one where you know all of my followers who are family members, either the ones that can't read, the one that can read, they they don't read horror. So so, <laughs> so it's one they, they might actually like political books, but uh mm -hmm. in, in, in other other you know things. I know a lot of them like Westerns and things like that. So so but you know Rama, you and I are out because you know they're like, oh I don't read horror. And I'm like <laughs> Okay, sorry. Just like you said, just buy the book and use it as a coffee. Yeah, <laughs> use it to prop up the coffee table. <laughs> so, what, so, just, so what do you got else? Chris? Can I just ask a question about what David just said there? Because uh, I've never heard of this program and what Harriet just said. Like, I've never heard about this free. The booksy? Book. Yeah, mm -hmm. like this is this is completely new to me. Oh, and I thought it was I common knowledge. To... No. So, yeah, the, the okay. company is J J A. I'm sorry. Do you know about this? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I I I participated guess, guess in, in Western the, in... part of North America. We don't understand you, you Eastern Actually, folk. Oh my. I, I'm I'm from Calgary, so <laughs> um, but I live in Niagara now. Um, but um, I, I participated in a Goodreads giveaway like that. Yep. But oh, you know, you it was expensive. Yeah, like it was expensive. I think it cost me about, um, but you know, it's Canadian, right? Canadian dollars to exchange. <laughs> I think in the end, it was like $150 or $170 or something. And mm. I, but I limited how many were, so it was a contest. Mm, okay, yep. So it was more, yeah, it was more of a contest and you had to, um, there was a limited time to put in your name and like it was like a week or two weeks and so everybody put in their name and same thing i was like oh my god i've got 
5,000 people putting in their names, oh. right? And um, and then I think it was only 50 books, 50 or 100 books that were given away, like, to the winners. But, yeah, I was a little disappointed afterwards because I was expecting all of these reviews and, you know, three days, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which okay. didn't happen, but they did trickle in. They they did start trickling in, and it was mostly the good read Goodreads reviews, and I did get a couple of Amazon ones. So it does work, but you can't expect it to be, you know, just walk into the candy store and get a can and and get all the candy that you want. <laughs> it it trickles in, and you might not see um, the effects for weeks, months. Yeah, that's a good point. Like I would say, temper your expectations mm -hmm. and yeah. and just yeah. be realistic about what it's going to produce for you and and make sure you you're doing it for the right reasons yeah. like i think like how harriet described like that's exactly the reason i was doing it too it, it was an experiment it was just to see um and you know it bore some fruit probably not as much as uh you would like but um yeah and like i said i'll see how the the latest experiment works but mm -hmm. um the the parent company i think it's written word media yeah they written did, word yeah. media yeah. yeah and it's free booksy bargain booksy they have a couple other things too that are genre specific so I, um yeah, yeah I, I just sent you a link chris i emailed it to you but the uh, the old email thing uh but the only thing i would advise on that is make sure to stagger those types of promotions right so you're like you're all excited i want to get my book out and if you do all of them then if something did work, you're not sure which one worked, right? So yeah. if you've done, you know, if you're, you know, especially if you're trying to save money, like like me, you know, if you do a Facebook ad, you don't want to then do an Amazon ad the same week because you don't know right. which one worked, right? 100%. Uh, so just stagger some of your things till you find out what, what works. Uh, in fact, somebody that contacted me to, will promote your book, I said, okay, I've got one currently going now, promotion. I said, I said, when that's done, I'll reach out to you so that we can track how many sales I get from your promotion. And they're like, oh, we don't guarantee sales. And so I'm like, okay. So if they're going to say it just like that, I'm not going to. Yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a bunch of those. You can even do it on Amazon has like the free book day and things like that where mm. the downloads. Mm -hmm. And what it can help you with is uh, the the reviews, hopefully, right? You know, what, what the goal is, is that you at least, even if you don't get a review, hopefully somebody will read it for free and give you good ratings. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. uh, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but I don't think anybody's said, said how good it is or bad it is or anything else. Uh, but what about Goodreads, right? So I have the profile, you know, I have my author profile on Amazon, you know, have on my website, and then I also have it on... <laughs> Uh, Goodreads. Does anybody still use that, or is that something that's I just... do? I actually just got some new reviews and ratings on that one over the past Good. couple of weeks. Uh, I definitely have more reviews on most of my work there than I do on Amazon or other sites. Yep. However, it's it's not the best sales tool. I mean, unless you're like making thousands getting thousands of ratings or hundreds of even just hundreds of ratings um your book might not get noticed this uh if you're able to get a book out and suddenly it's just getting review after review after review tens and 20s and 30s he's of reviews after like only a couple of days and yeah it might get some exposure but really i wouldn't use it as a marketing tool well, that I mean, you can if you get a new review, you can post to like your Facebook page or your your uh, Twitter account. Hey, check out this new review for such and such book. Right. Um, but don't expect any sales from it. At least that's yeah. just been my experience. And doing the things in person, you know, like Ja does, I would recommend telling people as you're handing them that book at that conference at oh i do that yeah, all the hey, time go to good free go to goodreads and, and uh -huh. give me a, give me a good review even if you're handing out cards have a qr code that'll take them there because the one of the nice things about that is they don't have to prove they've read the book right so amazon you have to prove you've purchased the book whether paperback or otherwise uh you know but if like for me believe it or not my books are available at walmart.com so so i was <laughs> 
Yeah, I was searching one day and I'm like, really? And a couple of places overseas and I'm like, wow, I don't have to do the work. Yay. Uh, but, but, you know, if somebody purchases from those other things, they can't go to Amazon then and put in a review. Which is, is That's what exactly what I was going to say about Goodreads. So Goodreads is a really good place for them, for anybody to go that bought your book anywhere else other than Amazon oh. and they can leave a review. Uh, book tours, those, those book blog tours, they use Goodreads a lot. Well, nice. oh. I don't believe exactly. it. I'm on Walmart too. I'm sorry. Exactly just... for that reason, right? <laughs> because they don't want Amazon coming down their throat, right? <laughs> if Walmart is listening to this and they'd like to sponsor this next uh, author round table <laughs> on episode nine, please reach out to David Mercer in beautiful South Carolina. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. But yeah, no, it, it was, uh, yeah, when it, when it came up, it was there. I was like, wow, that's it's surprising. Uh, it's also at some discount warehouse, and I don't know how I feel about that. I'm like, yeah, so, just, so, so, but the, uh, but yeah, so, so I advise, you know, like I said, Goodreads for that. I don't know of any other site that's comparable to Goodreads, right? So, so you're probably better off sticking with the Amazon and Goodreads for your author profiles. Uh, Storygraph? What's that? Uh, Storygraph is one I've heard of. Hmm. It's, Kind of like trying to be um, um, Goodreads, but without a lot of the Amazon bullshit. Huh. Um, but it's still not as popular as um, as Goodreads is. Okay, I'll look it up. But, but, I, I found but, a little but, trick oh, with Goodreads. Oh, sorry, I found a little good trick with Goodreads. Is I I don't know how much how much um how how avid of readers you are mm -hmm. um or everyone is but i'm a really avid reader like i will digest a book at least once a month so i i read about 12 books a year wow and and when i'm done i cannot exist for very long without another book <laughs> mm. so um so i actually review other books oh wow nice oh i do too all the time yeah yeah. And, then, and then I have, yeah, I, and then I get followers mm -hmm. from those reviews. Yeah. Oh, that's good. so do I. I re I just reviewed Stephen King's new collection on my blog. It's gotten plenty of views, and people so actually rely on my opinion yeah. a lot, which is nice. How how was it? Was it good? You recommend it? Yeah. I mean, there were a couple of duds in there, but. For the most part, the stories were very solid, and even some of them scared me a little. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. No, that's that's actually a good idea about reviewing other people's stuff. I mean, I always wondered why a group of authors ourselves didn't just start reviewing each other's stuff glowingly and 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 beat the system and 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 all be bazillionaires. Well, uh, I, I would caution against that. I would say read them honestly and review the ones you like. Exactly. See, yeah. that's yeah. what yeah. everybody always says. Yeah. I'm like, no, read it. It's it's I like it because my friend did it. No, yeah. it's uh but but that that's one of the things. Uh the, the next topic I had, unless Chris, you had something or did I interrupt you earlier? Did you remember what it was? I can wait for another round you, there, Dave. All right. So, so so I noticed this the other day. So I, I like, you know, my, my books are available in, in, in Audible right now, the, the ones previously and the new ones I'm probably going to make Audible at least. I was driving down the road looking for something to read. I was doing it at stoplights and stop signs, right? And I was just filtering through. But what I noticed was how little context you have on those books, right? You can, you know, get the genre as fiction, and you can say unabridged and stuff like that, but you're really, you know, you've got a couple keywords you can search on, but the text that you get is really just the title, and and it's not a lot of information to to help guide somebody else to find you. So what I noticed was the really important thing was the cover, uh, and and I'm reading something by uh, a gentleman, Devin C. Ford. It's called Toy Soldiers: The Complete Series, uh, and it's a uh, it's a zombie story. Uh, really love it. He he made one one mistake that I made in one of my novels too. So so I really love it because of that. Uh, but but just the story is great. Uh, he did the thing. I think I said this in one of previous podcast where the guy jumps in the Mustang, drives to the farm, and gets out of his truck. Right. Huh? He did the exact same thing. The people he's he's like he's like my you know the 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 father hopped in the truck, drove into town, 
And then, of course, gets killed by zombies. Sorry, spoiler there. And then the mother's <laughs> trying to get away. And it said, we had to take my my dad's truck because 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 my dad took the car. And I'm going, so I rewound it and I listened to it. I'm like, yes, he did the same mistake I did. <laughs> Stephen King did something similar in the Needful Things audiobook. He accidentally called one character by a different character's name. <laughs> exactly. So, so, but back, sorry. And that was a good, you know, David C. Ford, great novel, love it. One of the best zombie stories that that, that I've read. I, I really enjoy that novel. I've got to reach out to him uh, because it's just it's just a fun series on zombies, which is always fun. <laughs> uh, but how important and how much time do you spend on your covers? So, like, I know that you know a lot of people here use arc readers and things like that. Uh, none of my family or friends can read, so I don't do the, that mostly. Uh, but for for the covers, they will look at a picture, so, so I do send send the pictures out to get their thoughts on it. Uh, so so, what are your thoughts on you know? Do you review your covers with people and say, hey, is this a catchy cover? Or, you know, what do you think? Especially if you're doing it yourself or having it commissioned. What's your David? I just want to say I, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go. Same. But I thank you all. It's been a, it's been wonderful. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you all. That's and awesome. I wish out all of our authors the best of luck <laughs> with their writing and their sales and enjoy every word. Well, thanks before again, you go, Harry, yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Harriet. Harriet. Before thanks, you go, Harriet, where, where can we oh. find you? Where can we find you? Give a shout out for your last book and, and all your, your latest book. Oh, so, um, well, my books are Fee Simple Conditional. Oh. There we go. And clear and convincing evidence. They are on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm on Twitter at HC Hellfan and on Instagram at HC Hellfan. And uh, the um, right of redemption will be coming out in the fall. So there thank you, you very, very thank much. You. Take Thanks, care. everybody. Bye bye. We'll see you. Bye. I actually bye. have to get going too. All right. Give us the sign off as well for, for you, Rami. Uh, you can find me at my website, ramiungertherwriter.com. R A M I U N G A R, the writer.com, as well as Facebook, Threads, Blue Sky, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm no longer on Twitter because it's a hellhole now. So, <laughs> as and for, my books, <laughs> and for my books, uh, Snake nice. Peak, uh, is Kirk, as I said, it's on sale through Monday the 17th. It's a great slasher novel, so please check it out. And oh starting on the 20th through the 27th, Rose, great fantasy horror novel, oh, also on sale. So please do check them out. Okay, cool. Take care. So good everybody. night and pleasant nightmares, everyone. Thanks for having me. Yep, I'll be talking to you again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. Anybody else have to go or wh wh where are we at time-wise? Probably need to go soon, but I can hang for just a little bit longer. All right. So, so, so I think Chris had a topic. He's on mute, so we don't have to listen to you, Chris. Uh, is it? No, no. I said I got about <laughs> so, 15, so, about 15 so cover. I'd like to get here. your opinions on the covers real quick, just to see if you take the same pains to get reviews on those first before you know using them, or 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 what. And then if there's any other topics from anybody, and I appreciate everybody being on here today. I I did uh, I I did ask for what my arc readers thought this last book, especially because. One, I've never writ written um, a Western type book. And two, it was American history. Usually I focus on Canadian history or, well, I did European as well. So I actually asked two American arc readers. Nice. Like, what do you think? Is this something you, what do you think when you look at this, right? And because originally the first the, this was the first thing she came up with, the, bo the, the book cover design artist. And right away, I thought, that's too commercial. <laughs> that just looks like some kind of movie series. <laughs> and I didn't like it. And I asked her to, to go through it again. I wanted horses. I wanted this. Yeah. I wanted that. We went through like, oh, gosh, like six different it was it was awful and finally i showed my kids and they they couldn't decide either so i went to the arc readers and nice. and i gave them two two or three different choices they they all picked that right away that's awesome that, they said that's amazing cover that's that awesome. says america all over it yeah and i was like okay well 
that does it right each each one of those books as i was driving down the road stop to the stoplight uh only got you know maybe a quarter of a second before i would you know just just scroll to the next one so 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 that shows how important it is you know <laughs> You have to judge a book by its cover now. Judge right? a book by its cover, there, Mister. Exactly, Mazzucco. that's it. That's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I would just say you only held it up briefly, but what I saw instantly told me what genre. Now I know you said what genre it was, but I was like, oh yeah, that's like perfect for that for yeah. for what you described it as. Mm -hmm. Like I, I yeah. instantly connected. Yeah, but I and I think it comes down to um, like this is my sixth book, though, right? Um, my first and second and well my third my third book cover started getting better but my first and second i was so much of a control freak right i was like i want this on my cover i want this i want this right and then i realized by about book three book four that i stink as a cover designer <laughs> i i am a writer i am not a book cover designer <laughs> Just so I should do go. It, don't do it. Yeah. So I am paying a book cover designer good money. Let her do her job. Nice. I'll That's it. it. Right. And what she comes up with, even if I don't like it 100%, I need to find out what other people think. Right. Because, like I said before, we get so connected with our books. It's a part of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. But we need to as authors to also understand we need to attract the readers right yep. and what they want to see on the cover that's what we want <laughs> exactly. now what what time period in the west is that based on right because i'm i'm like a fan of louis or more so you go all the way from 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 where they were frontier days to to you know early cars well this is the this is my second series so this is book one and it starts in 1811 so nice. it's about the 1812 war so it's kind of mm -hmm. like um it's a uh it's about two um, two american families one that's living in canada the loyalists mm -hmm. and one that is living in the united states <laughs> yeah so it's 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 a really good almost like family feud start to the wow. series Very so it's cool. not technically a western because it's 1811 1812 it goes to 1815 mm -hmm. um but the the actual western will be book three because nice. it will be the, the I civil like war I like that. right but i've always kind of gave it a little bit of a western spin and this is yeah. the north the, there is northwestern frontier in there which did happened back then yeah. and it was an important part of the reason for the 1812 war oh nice. i like it so chris what do we got for your next topic here on the couch oh no because by the time we get into my next topic we'll we'll discuss the next topic in the next round table because <laughs> all right so, so i'm, I'm gonna cover one more thing before we all go okay. so 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 dave's problem this is me i have problems right so so my problem is being dyslexic and a lazy kid. I don't see tenses in words. Okay, just when I'm reading a sentence, I don't see the tense. Right? I it did. I, I I understand it from the story, but I don't look at a word and say is, was, etc. So if I'm reviewing my work, you know, when I'm writing, I might write was instead of is. I do it tons of time. Uh, all of my editors are like. Hey Dave, you changed tenses three times in the same sentence, and I'm going, oh, that's not good. Uh, so, so I went to all the open AI junk and and all the auto crits, Quillbot, and all those other writing tools, and I tried to find anything to help me. Nothing would help me at all. I asked open AI. I said, here's a paragraph. Uh, give me the the past tense of all of the narration in it because i want the narration to be in past tense the 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 dialogue may be in future present what have you doesn't matter it's going to be in something else maybe uh it changed and said that the word opens is opens the o-p-e-n-s-e-d and i'm like is everything spelled <laughs> correctly in what you gave me and it's like yes and i'm like no so 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 long story short i wrote myself something and and in uh i transfer the documents now into markdown which is like html and i wrote myself a parser so if it's dialogue it shows up with, with you know highlighted text 
And then I push another button and all of the tense words show up. And I'm like, yay, I can finally do it. Uh, so so I'm going to actually put this out on GitHub someday after I finish through some of the reviews of it myself. Uh, but it's one that that was just a problem I had. And those other tools didn't have a solution. Like AutoCrit would list out all of the verbs in it, but they wouldn't tell you if they were in dialogue or not. So telling me I have mixed tense in a a, a chapter of a novel doesn't help me when I when I have have dialogue, right? right. So, so does does want... Grammarly not not do tense? No, it, no, it does tense, but it doesn't correct it for the context it is inside of the paragraph. So if yeah. you have something in quotes, and and so it was just it was just an interesting thing I found, and, and I'm like. Yeah, you know, I've been on it for about a month trying to find something because <laughs> yeah, one of the editors is like, this is, you know, they're like, we're going to stop here. You're going to have to edit the rest of this. <laughs> every other word was that. So I was just curious if, if you all found any better editors out there in general. And if not, like I said, I am going to publish this out so people can download it themselves and use it for free. So because I, I used AI to create that program because I've never written an extension in, in my life before, but it, so far, it looks like it's going to work. Awesome. I can say that I have You're on mute, Chris. Am I? <laughs> Testing one, two, three. You're on mute. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. Testing nope. one, two, three. You can now we can. Me? Oh, you're very low. Bit. Very low. Oh, testing one, two, three. How about now? A little no, I, better. I'm still low. Anyway. Little. Hello. Hello. Still low, but you're, you're there. <laughs> Okay, hold on. You continue. There, yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. I don't know. I don't know what I did there. I just flipped the microphone. Uh no, I don't have that issue. Uh, but what I did have an issue was, and this is just the way that you have to write things now with the whole political correct world that we live in. When you gender a certain character, you have to make sure you keep that straight the entire way through the entire story if it's based oh. in a certain time frame. And then, so like you were saying how the gentleman jumped out of the truck and got into his Mustang at the, in the second page, I was going from she to they, to she, to her, to them, to her. And then I had to make sure that when, when they got it back, they said, what, what are you, what are you trying to say here? Is it a non-binary character? Is it a female character? So you have to make sure. So that's where, that's where my sort of stumbling block was, was. Because of the world we live in right now, you have to yep. be very cautious of where you're, what lines you're drawing. So that way you don't upset people. It's a great idea. I never even thought about that as far as, you know, uh, just, you know, being that type of problem, you know, being consistent like that. I mean, I know that different types of editors will do that. And actually, J.A., I've learned a lot about you from the different types of editors before, <laughs> because at first for me, I was like, you just give it to an editor and they fix it right it's, but it's there's different types of editors and, and consistency and all that good fun junk uh but yeah no that's uh i might actually add that as a feature uh chris to this to to be able to identify those words so here's here it is uh, and you see up above is some you know test words and stuff like that but it shows me you know hey he he, he puked and if i double click on it i can say he pukes right and and you know standing stood uh, so, so I've made it, uh, made it do that. And, and of course the down here, this is text that's this dialogue. Now this is just from a test, test run of something just to show it. Uh, it's not perfect, but, but it's something that it, it'll be good enough for me because I can look at this and see in this narrative point of text, right. That I've got different types of tense inside of it. So that's going to help me in, in my review. So what I might do is add something to uh, to do the uh, to the do the gender and things like that. That might yeah. be a fun fun little thing to add. But uh, but yeah, like I said, it was just I looked. I couldn't believe the other tools didn't do it. They didn't distinguish between dialogue, thought, and narration. I'm like, it's just an author tool. You think they would have that? <laughs> but but no. So so I appreciate everybody being on here. Uh, we will have another one of these, and uh, and and if. Uh, yeah, let, let's just everybody do their their sign offs. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, Chris, you have to stay till the end because you're <laughs> recording. So sorry. Uh, so, so, so John, we'll let you go first and 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 talk about your book, where they can find you, and all that good fun stuff, and we'll go from there. John St. Clair, my 
book is Stalin's Door. You can get it on Amazon. And uh, you can find me. I'm, I'm on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, um, more than anything else. So me I'm too. at UU Saint. I'm there every day. Pretty easy to find and interact. And I've got a, a, a lot of uh, really, really nice people that I've met there. And uh, I hope that the site is around uh, for a little while longer. I know it seems like it's imploding or has imploded or exploded or any of that, but at least the folks that I've met are really nice and I want to keep that going. I know there's some other sites out there, but like I said, with anything else, uh, the more you're on one site, the less you're on something else. There's only so many hours in a day. And so I'd love to be on some of these other ones. I'm on threads a little bit. I'm on Facebook a little bit, but uh, if I had to pick one right now, it's, it's, uh, it's Twitter. If it totally blows up, I'll find something else, but okay. uh, that's just me. So thank you, David. These are great. Please, uh, please, this, please do this again soon. We definitely will. So, so David, how about you? Can you give us your sign off and where to find you and, and what you got coming out? Uh, sure. I, I'm in a dark room because I write dark books, but <laughs> and they always have black covers. I'm I'm strange. Um, but West Falls Revisited, June 25th. Nice. I hope you uh, take a visit to the wonderful yeah. town of West Falls where all kinds of horrible <laughs> things happen to people. Um, and uh, you can find, I, I am, well, I'm still on X because like John, like you make certain connections there and some people that's still their primary place mm -hmm. where you can reach them. But I'm really only there selfishly to market my <laughs> books. I really don't interact that much anymore. I've moved the interaction over to threads and I've actually mm -hmm. developed a, a met new people there, uh, authors and readers alike. Um, awesome. So you can find me on threads. That's where I'm active the most. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can also find me on my website slash originally with a blog, um, the Schleicher spin dot com. Um, and I post reviews of movies and books and obviously talk about my own books on there as well. So nice. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Jay, how about yourself? Thank you for uh, for encouraging me to 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 do this. Uh, because again, it was just something where I got lazy and was busy and, and all the dumb excuses. So, so thank you for, for encouraging this one. Well, thank you for doing this. And, and I just, I, I, I missed it. I, I really enjoy, uh, coming on and just, uh, shooting the, you know, <laughs> with a bunch of authors exactly. and, uh, and it's just, it's, it's fun. I like it. Um, where you can find me is um, anywhere, really. I'm on Amazon, Twitter. Um, I, I'm through all the bookstores. I am I spend a lot of time on Instagram as well. Oh. It's J.A. Boule author there. And uh, Twitter is Love Walk Life. The easiest place to go is my website, jaboule.ca. Last name is B-O-U-L-E-T. And all my links are there. I'm on Reddit too. And I actually use Reddit quite a bit. Nice. And, uh, but, you know, like other people here have said is I don't have any personal social media. It's all for my books. Nice. It's all for my author platform. And I'm on YouTube too. I, I do YouTube book trailers for nice. every book that comes out. and. It's um, it's my job, and I want it to be my full time job, nice. right? And yeah, thank Very you for having me on here. Thank you for being here. Now, is your is your latest Western is that going is that on Audible or going to be? I'm a big audiobook guy, so you know what it's it's coming out June twentieth. Um, it's ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Okay, but I actually quit audiobooks did you okay yeah i did the first two and even though i have a good audio voice and even though i really know how to do all the mixing now because i have to do it through for my book trailers and i i oh. still do it for my book trailers i do the music i do the voice yes. acting i change tone i do all of that stuff i just find it's too exhausting for me to go through an entire book Oh, and yeah it's it's a lot of work a lot of work and i just found that yeah 
I just, I can't do it. I'm so I'm focusing on getting the written books out and continuing that. That's the main thing uh, you're creating. So. Yeah. And until things change and I honestly, if I was to do book three, uh, as an audio book, I would probably just pay a voice actor. It's too much work. <laughs> that's, that's what I did for mine. I, I tried to do it yeah. myself, but I don't have a good spot to do it. So the echo is just insane in this room. So, so, but I appreciate you being the one. I was just curious on that. Uh, and then yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sign off and then let, uh, or actually let's let Chris sign off since he's got a, he, <laughs> Um, again, thank you so much. I always get so much out of these as much as uh, it, I jokingly say it's my therapy session. It's actually more of my editing session because now I can go back and start editing a little bit more. Uh, I do hope that we continue on with these maybe in a month's time, hopefully not a six month absence like we did mm -hmm. last time. Hopefully it's a little bit more, more uh, constant so that way we can continuously uh, promote ourselves, but promote the people who are on these uh, episodes and potentially bring in more authors to come talk uh my original book that i published just keep talking is on amazon uh that's the only place that you can find it uh the other ones that are going to be coming out in october and in all of 2025 that is i'm not 100 percent sure where they're going to be published yet because <laughs> all i know is i'm still in the writing process and once i've got the final draft brought back from the editors i'm going to be sending it off to uh, a few people in this call to read it over yes. once if possible so that way they can give us me their unbiased opinion because i i trust them and i trust that they're not going to slam me too hard when they give me their honest critiques about my main protagonist who if you don't like then you don't like me because he's part of me so yeah. just putting that out there right now for anyone who reads this if you have any issues with my main protagonist you just don't like me and during pride <laughs> month you can't hate gay characters so there you go <laughs> Yeah. I love it. congratulations by yeah. the way that is Thank awesome I, I love it that you took the advice to just keep writing and next thing you know you got four books coming out i know that's, awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. that's just that's funny it's, I, I love it uh so so of course I, i'm dave muster your host uh the uh uh living death was my latest one republished so so that's one that i'd published originally and and, and yep yeah, they're, they're republishing now i'll send you a picture of the cover for bad humans they they did an awesome job. It's not it's not live yet, so I won't post it here. Uh, but yeah, so all of my books are being republished through next chapter, uh, mm. and all of that good stuff. It's 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 one that just uh, hopefully it'll allow me just to focus on the writing. And that's that's the biggest part is that you know if we have any advice to give to the other authors out there, it's just focus focus on the writing. Find find a time that works for you to write, and then just be diligent about doing it. Uh, but but I appreciate everybody being here. We will definitely have another one of these. Uh, if anybody has topics and things like that or friends that uh, want to be on the next one, just ha have them reach out to me. I'm available on you know, Twitter, Facebook, X, you know, threads, uh, uh, Blue Sky, and, and a bunch of them. So, so you can definitely find me uh, out there. So, so I appreciate everybody being here. So uh, with that, it looks like our, 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 the puppy has joined the call. So we are, we are signing off. So, so thank you all. <laughs>